And uh, continuing along with the, uh, with the Red Hat theme, next up we will be hearing from the chief technologist at Red Hat, Chris Wright. All right, good morning. Uh, last week we did have the Red Hat Summit and Jim was talking a little bit about that notion of planning and uh, planning is dead and he, he brought out a quote that I wasn't sure what to do with that and that was from Mike Tyson, which was, everybody has a plan till they're punched in the face. So I don't know, make, make of that what you will, uh, but great to kind of bring some different points of view in, into the picture. Um, this is my 12th, Op, uh, OpenStack Summit. And it actually started for me here in Boston. It was a small group of us from Red Hat uh, about, about six years ago. And we were just getting engaged in the community and just, just getting started. Five years ago, we became platinum members of the OpenStack Foundation. And today, uh, Red Hat is leading over 60 sessions. So we're committed to this community and we're really honored to be a part of this community. And so I just want to take a moment to, to acknowledge that. So let's look at what we, some data we got from the OpenStack user survey. And I wanted to, you know, it's a big survey. I would recommend you read it because there's a lot of useful and uh, good information in there. And I wanted to pull out a few key bits. Um, first and foremost, the number of per deployments, OpenStack deployments, or the percentage of OpenStack deployments that are in production, two-thirds of all the deployments uh, that, that from the user survey uh, are showing up as being in production. So there's always going to be those pre-production stages, uh, the POCs, et cetera. But look at the large percentage of, of OpenStack deployments that are in production. It's a modest increase from last year, and I think it really shows the impact that uh, OpenStack is having on these organizations. And the top three reasons that the organizations are choosing OpenStack, number one is to avoid vendor lock-in. And I think that is really a core value of open source and collaborative development. The work, the work that we do together is accessible to anybody, and the work that we do as a vendor is accessible to our competitors, and they work with us in the community, and we, and we bring those to markets in different ways. And I think that's a really strong value of, of any open source community. Another thing that open source is doing is really driving innovation, driving innovation at this accelerated pace. And businesses are struggling to keep up, and one of the things they need to do is build, them, build a platform that allows them to move quickly. So they're using OpenStack to accelerate their own innovation and their ability to move quickly and respond to market uh, demands. And then to meet the long-standing mantra from IT, which is essentially you need to do more for less, uh, organizations are looking to OpenStack to improve their, their infrastructure efficiency. And so it's three, three really great reasons showing how OpenStack is making a measurable impact to businesses today. And then something that's new in this survey, a look at how users are adopting uh, OpenStack in relationship with vendors. And we were honored and proud to see Red Hat show up as number one on that list. But equally important is that list has a healthy number of people working in this, in this ecosystem and delivering OpenStack uh, to their customers. So I think that kind of underscores what I would call a maturing market, demonstrating real value uh, for, for, for businesses and a rich ecosystem. So today, we have over 500 OpenStack customers. Public sector, private sector, academia, financial services, Analytic services, content providers, telecom, retail, you name it, it's across the board. This is really exciting, it's a great place to be to see how OpenStack is impacting all these businesses. In some cases, you're using it today and you may not be aware. 
let's drill in and look at one specific customer who's here in Boston. This is MOC. MOC is the Massachusetts Open Cloud. And this is built from a um, consortium of five different universities and partnership with industry. And the Massachusetts Open Cloud is really dri driving research. So the research, it's multidiscipline research. It's not just research in, say, computer science, but uh, other disciplines as well. And part of this research is going to generate a lot of data. So they've deployed hundreds of nodes of, of OpenStack in connection with Ceph. And the Ceph uh, deployment has currently 700 terabytes of data storage. And that combined infrastructure, they're running on standard hardware with minimal staff. So it's that reflecting that cost efficiency that we talked about just a moment ago. And there are future plans to increase the storage capacity to 20 petabytes. You heard earlier about uh, data collection at staggering rates. This is a good example of, of how that's important and how a cloud can bring that together. And in this case, the, the, these, the cloud dataverse, as, as it's referred to, uh, is a place to do rich sharing of, of information across researchers. It's helped researchers generate $12 million worth of NSF funding. We're participating uh, at, in doing some research together with one of those universities. Boston University, we've created a uh, Red Hat Collaboratory at BU. And this is a research endeavor that Red Hat and, and BU are, are working on t together. And one of the things that we're doing there is looking at things like OpenStack and Ceph at the infrastructure layer. What kind of data can we pull out and make that data accessible to other researchers to analyze how you operate distributed systems at scale? One really exciting project that we're doing together with them is with the Children's Hospital. And the Children's Hospital does fetal imaging. And right now, it's a fairly manual process, and it's slow. It takes a day to generate a collection of 2D images, combine them, and extrapolate to a 3D image. We're adding a containerized application using Kubernetes. For us, that's OpenShift. Direct access to accelerated hardware like GPUs for machine learning to do image recognition to take that process of a collection of 2D images and extrapolate to a 3D image from something like a day down to seconds or minutes. So massive change in how they can do their research uh, and something that's a worthy cause and a really just uh, impressive kind of technology feat, something that we're really proud of working with MOC and BU on. I mentioned Kubernetes. Uh, You've heard a lot about containers today. And generally in the industry, containers have a lot of attention. And what we're looking at is, what is how can we bring innovation into organizations built on a strong foundation and help those organizations evolve? Our customers use everything you can imagine, from legacy applications, some physical servers, to servers that are virtualized, to OpenStack-based private clouds, to a variety of public clouds including you know, AWS, Azure, Google, and OpenStack-powered public clouds. They're struggling to find ways to manage all of this infrastructure. And one important piece is that container and the container application. And we'll drill in just to the cloud side of that picture. Building an abstraction with something like containers and Kubernetes helps those uh, organizations become in their app lets their application layer become independent from the infrastructure. And if you think back in time, that's a lot of what Linux did as an operating system. It decoupled the application from the underlying heterogeneous infrastructure. And then you also saw things like Java helping an application take a higher level view, more accessible to the developer, building another layer of abstraction. So you can kind of picture the same thing moving over to a data center-wide infrastructure. You've got infrastructure which does not go away at the bottom. You've got some application-centric view of the world through containers and container orchestration, and then you have the apps themselves. So the, I think it's important to look at how layers can be useful, how innovation can be inspired through this separation with clear boundaries. And note, here we are at the OpenStack Summit. Infrastructure is critical. It's the underpinnings of all the applications at the end of the day. This is an example of drilling into some of the details of how you would combine a Kubernetes stack on top of OpenStack. And this is exactly what we're doing in that fetal imaging example that I gave earlier. So switch gears quickly, since this is a compressed time, and say all of this is about evolution, innovation, and change. 
And one of the things that's critical for us with our customers is helping them manage that change. Ingest new technologies, and something like OpenStack as an existing technology is going to evolve itself. So two spe specific examples, uh, we've been working in the Neutron community on an ML2 OVS uh, plugin for quite some time. It's a collection of agents, uh, as well as the core Neutron service that ultimately have built up what you would consider an SDN solution around OVS. We started working with the OVS community, building something similar, using the expertise in OVS and centralizing some of this uh, processing and creating a consistent agent on the edge called OVN. And we want to work with our customers in a very prescriptive way to help them move from one existing technology to the next, not ever leaving anybody behind. Similarly, when you look at our production deployment tool, uh, today it's based on triple O and heat. And you hear a lot about containers being a, a way to manage applications, web scale applications. Certainly, you could consider OpenStack a web scale application using containers to containerize the services and ultimately perhaps leveraging the potential of Kubernetes to manage that infrastructure layer as an application is something that's uh, of great interest to us. And again, the importance there for us is how we evolve that solution so that our customers are never left behind. There's always a possibility to do upgrades from release to release. And uh, I think that's a, a really important part of what we do for our customers. It's part of what we focus on in the community when we're bringing technology changes in. And with that, I wanted to thank you for working together and look forward to continued evolving and bringing new innovation to, uh, to this community. Thank you.